Hello everyone. Today we're going to be answering the question, how long should you wait before you harvest your crops in Minecraft? If I was to periodically harvest a crop, that is, wait a certain amount of time and then harvest, wait a certain amount of time and then harvest, then wait a certain amount of time, then harvest, and so on, what is the optimal time that I should wait? The answer turns out to be dependent on what crop you are growing and specifically the number of growth stages that crop has. In this video, I will outline the Minecraft prerequisites followed by the math prerequisites to understand the question. I will then show the answer as well as some of the interesting math that arises along the way. Huh. To understand crop growth in Minecraft, we first need to understand how the game processes random events. The game updates itself every 1 20th of a second. These updates are called ticks. In each tick, three blocks in every 16 by 16 by 16 area loaded like this pink cube, are chosen to be updated randomly. If a block is chosen in this process, it is said to have been random ticked. Random ticks dictate many events in the game. If ticked, fire can spread, ice can melt, and for our purposes, crops can grow. Crops in Minecraft have growth stages that dictate when a crop's items can be collected. For example, here we're looking at wheat. Wheat has eight growth stages labeled zero through seven. When planted, all crops begin on growth stage zero. If a crop is random ticked, it will advance to the next growth stage. If a crop is harvested, it will only yield items if it's on its last growth stage. So here we'll see only seeds. We only got wheat on the last one. It is important to recognize that certain crops have more growth stages than may appear. For example, carrots have eight growth stages, but only four visually distinct stages. We will care about the true number of growth stages in this video. For any specific crop's true number of growth stages, please refer to the Minecraft wiki. It is also important to recognize that certain crops have an additional probability of a random tick not advancing the crop to the next growth stage. For example, amethyst shards have four growth stages, but only a 20% chance that a random tick will advance the crop to the next growth stage. This is by design, as the developers wanted growth to be slower for amethyst clusters than normal crops. Finally, it is also important to recognize that periodically harvesting crops is not always the best option to maximize returns. For example, a simple observer-based farm will outpace a periodic farm for sugarcane with all other things constant. This video only focuses on maximizing periodic farms. Of course, there are still blocks in the game where the best option is a periodic farm. Il Mango points out in this video that amethyst clusters are a good candidate for a periodic farm. In fact, my initial inspiration for studying this question comes from this video. So what can be said about periodic farms? First, let's focus on a single block as we assume that the growth of one crop block is independent of another. Let's also imagine that the block has a number written on it to represent the number of random ticks the block has received. It is known that a block is random ticked on average every 68.27 seconds. This means that the label on this block will increment by one every 68.27 seconds on average. An individual block may increment in 5 seconds or 500 seconds, but on average we expect that it will increment every 68.27 seconds. The first question to answer is after we wait t seconds, what is the probability that the block has k growth stages? For example, if we wait a thousand seconds, what is the chance that the block now shows that it has received 12 random ticks? Because we know the expected number of time between ticks, we can use a mathematical tool called the Poisson distribution to answer this question. In our case, the expected number of random ticks in a given amount of time t is t over 68.27. If we know the expected number of random ticks in a given time, then the probability that the label x on the block is equal to k is given by the following equation. Here, the left-hand side of the equation is notation for the probability that the label x is equal to k growth stages. The e in the right-hand side of the equation is the base of the natural logarithm and is roughly equal to 2.718. 
The k exclamation point means to multiply all of the positive integers less than or equal to k together. For example, 5 exclamation point is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 120. This operation is called a factorial for those curious. Let's use this formula on our example. If we weighted t is 1,000 seconds, the chance that the block has received 12 random ticks is... So, there is a 0.8% chance that the block has received 12 random ticks after 1,000 seconds. Notice that for our application, we don't care about the block reaching a specific number of random ticks. We only care that the block has received at least as many random ticks as there are growth stages. This is because once a crop has received at least as many ticks as it has growth stages, then harvesting will yield an item, i.e. it's on its last growth stage. Let's call the number of growth stages for our crop n. Therefore, we really need to consider the probability that the label is at least n, which is given by the following equation. Here, the Greek letter sigma means summing over the possible labels k from 0 to n minus 1. So for our example, we should really care about the probability that the block shows at least 12 random ticks after waiting 1,000 seconds. That calculation looks like this. So there is a 79% chance that the block has received at least 12 random ticks after 1,000 seconds. Finally, to get an expression for the crop returns per second we would get if we were to harvest our example block at time t, we simply divide that function by t. Let's call our crop returns function f sub n of t. This function gives the returns one would expect if the crop we are growing has n growth stages and we wait t seconds. The question of when is the best time to wait is now how do we maximize f sub n of t over t for a given n? We can more easily study the maximum of f sub n of t with the related function g sub n of t, which is defined like this. This function has the following relation. g sub n of t is useful because if the maximum of g sub n of t is a value, we'll call it lambda n, then the maximum of f sub n of t is 68.27 times this lambda n. Intuitively, g sub n of t represents the crop returns if blocks got updated once per second on average instead of 68.27 seconds. So we will focus on g sub n of t to get to the heart of the problem. Ooh. The goal of this project was to get some expression for the function lambda n which again intuitively is the optimal time to wait for a crop with n growth stages to be harvested to maximize returns if blocks got updated once per second on average. Viewers that know calculus know that one can find the maximum of a function by taking the derivative and setting that equal to zero. This is how we get our first expression for lambda n. So we calculate the following. Computing this gives the following expression for lambda n. Though it's not possible to isolate lambda n from this equation, this relation is plenty fine for root finding algorithms. We can compute the first few values of lambda n easily using these algorithms. The first couple of values of lambda n are shown here. Let's use this table to replicate the calculation that Il Mango does in his video for amethyst clusters. Amethyst clusters have four growth stages and a one in five chance of being updated if random ticked. They also grow on the sides of blocks and are only updated if the block that it rests on is random ticked. As there are six sides on a cube and the side that receives a possible update is uniform random, we get that the optimal time to wait is 68.27 times lambda 4 times 5 times 6 seconds, which if we do the math, yields about 10,000 seconds or 167 minutes, which is the result Il Mango arrives at. This means that if we want to wait a certain amount of time to maximize our amethyst crystal returns, the best time to wait is 167 minutes. This means that if we harvest the amethyst clusters, then wait 167 minutes and then harvest them again, and then wait 167 minutes and then harvest them again, this is the best possible time to wait to maximize our returns. Notice that other crops may not have the factor of 5 or 6 we saw in the previous calculation, as those are both specific to amethyst growth. 
As an aside, the most accurate answer to Il Mango's question is given in ticks, as that's the most accurate clock you could make in the game. Here is the calculation for ticks, where we see that 199,937 ticks is the best time to wait for harvesting amethyst clusters. The previous table should be sufficient for answering any questions in Minecraft as of early 2023, as there are no crops currently in the game with a high number of growth stages. I was able to calculate this table for n less than or equal to 140 before the root finding algorithms I was using started failing. In the previous section, we showed a table of values for lambda n for small n. These were estimates generated by computer algorithms of the true values. Can anything be said about any of the values of lambda n exactly? It turns out we can write exact expressions for lambda 2 and lambda 3. Using Lagrange inversion, one can find the following daunting formulas for these two quantities. Here's the expression for lambda 2. And here is the expression for lambda 3, where this is taken into account and SAB is the AB th Sterling number of the second kind. These formulas are useful if your application requires more digits of lambda 2 or lambda 3 than provided in the table. For the rest of the video, I will discuss an approximation for lambda n for large n that I arrived at with the help of my advisor, Professor Ito Benari. Together, we found an asymptotic expansion for lambda n. For viewers not familiar, if we have two functions, f and g, f is asymptotic to g if the limit of their quotient as n goes to infinity is 1. Said another way, the relative error, so the limit of the difference of the two functions over the original function as n goes to infinity goes to 0. For example, f of n is n squared plus n is asymptotic to g of n is n squared even though the absolute error, the strict difference between the two functions, goes to infinity. Let's look at the asymptotic expansion of lambda n. The formula Professor Ben-Ari and I found isn't immediately relevant for Minecraft, as there are no crops with a very large number of growth stages. Regardless, I was curious to see how lambda n grew in n, and Professor Ben-Ari was more than willing to help me out. So how do you get an asymptotic expansion for lambda n? First, we use this alternative definition for lambda n that I found. This definition is useful because we can use Laplace's method to approximate the integral on the right-hand side of this equation. This gave us a way to find the leading terms of lambda n, which we determined to be this expression. We also found the more accurate but uglier expansion here. These formulas may be used in the future in Minecraft if Mo Yang introduces a crop that has a very large number of growth stages. Otherwise, the table of values shown earlier should suffice for optimizing any periodic farms as of early 2023. So in this video, we found a function lambda n that is critical in finding the optimal wait time for harvesting crops in Minecraft. We calculated 16 values of lambda using a computer. We then showed that lambda 2 and lambda 3 can be written exactly. Finally, we gave an asymptotic expansion for lambda n, which is good for large n. It may be possible to write an exact expression for lambda n, but I was unable to find one. I'd like to thank Professor Ido Benari for helping me arrive at the asymptotic expansion for lambda n. His enthusiasm for my work has always been a main motivator in my mathematics journey. Finally, I'd like to thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like or a comment. Have a nice day.